it looks like we have ourselves a little snowstorm today and i thought this would be the perfect day to do a lesson outside an english lesson to help you improve your english and today we're going to do a deep dive on the word warm and yeah you may be thinking what why are you doing it on such a cold day well surprisingly i'm actually quite warm the way i'm dressed and the first thing we should probably do for this english lesson on warm is define warm talk about what warm means hopefully you know cold and hopefully you know hot well warm is somewhere in between but a little closer to hot The next thing we need to do is talk about a very difficult English phrasal verb we use with warm, and that is warm up. And what makes it so difficult is that we use warm up in four different ways. The first way we will use it is something you do before exercising, something you do maybe before playing a sport, so you try to get your muscles warm when you warm up so you don't get injured. You might start by doing a little jog. You might start by doing a little stretching, but warming up is very important before you exercise. Another way we use warm up is when you have been somewhere cold and then you go somewhere else to get warm. For instance, after this English lesson, I will go back inside and it will be warmer and there I will be warming up. This is me from the future inside now warming up by the fire. If you ever go skiing or ice skating, I mean, you have to do that in cold places. They might have a warming room for you where you can warm up somewhere where you can go to get out of the cold. The weather is so bad out here, there aren't too many people walking and there aren't too many cars on the road. Another way we might use warm up in English is having something to do with being friendly. For instance, maybe there is a dog and that dog is shy, but once they get to know a person, they will start to warm up. They will start being more friendly. Oh, it looks like a, a plow is coming down the street. Let's look at that. Yeah, so if somebody is shy and they are uncomfortable around people when they first meet them, it might take them a while to warm up before they become totally friendly. Guess what? My friends in, in Russia, I know there are some people from Russia who are watching. Well, some people think that Russians, uh, it takes them a while for them to warm up to people. But I've heard once they become friends with you, they are really warm and friendly. Warm. So a couple other ways we use it with being friendly is you could give someone a warm smile or maybe you give them a warm hug. And the last way we use warm up is my favorite because that's the way we use it with food. Let's say you go to a restaurant and you don't finish your entire meal. You could take some of that food home and we call those leftovers, <coughs> excuse me, as I choke on a snowflake. Yeah, we call those things leftovers, the things that you take home, the food that you didn't eat, and maybe the next day you wanna eat it. So you might warm it up in the oven or you might warm it up in a microwave. Another way you might hear warm in English, and luckily you don't hear it that often, but it's with leg warmers. Back in the 1980s in the United States, a lot of people, mostly women, wore leg warmers 
when they exercised or maybe just as a fashion statement. Leg warmers, not so popular now, but another way you might hear warm in English. A couple other English words you might hear with warm in them uh, is hand warmers. Now, I'm wearing gloves. We wouldn't call those hand warmers, but you can buy hand warmers at the store. They're usually about a dollar a piece. They're little small square or rectangular things that you can keep in your pocket. So if you need your hands, like it's hard to shut the camera off when I'm done, but I could, if I had hand warmers, I could have my fingers a little bit more free and then every time my hands get cold, I could stick them in my pocket and in there I could have a hand warmer. You might also hear bench warmer in English. These are people who are on a sports team but they're not that good. They don't play a lot. So they sit on the bench quite a bit and they warm the bench for other players when they come off the field to get a rest. You might also hear the term seat warmer. These are a lot like hand warmers, only there for your butt. If you're going to an event and it's really cold out, you might sit on a seat warmer to keep yourself warm. Not too long ago, I did an English lesson all about the word ice. And guess what? Right now, my camera is icing up. It's a lot colder out here than I thought. Look at my glove. A lot of snow is piling up on that glove. There's a bonus English phrasal verb for you. Oh no, there's a truck on the sidewalk, so I may have to walk in the road for this next one. But this next one, let's take a look. This next one is thanks for keeping the seat warm. Thanks for keeping the seat warm for me. I need to go quickly so I don't get hit. But thanks for keeping the seat warm for me. Uh, parents will often say this to their children. Not bad, how are you? Parents will often say this to their children. In my house, I kind of have a special chair. Maybe like the dad's chair. It wasn't my chair until we got a dog and I'm allergic to dogs. So I usually sit in that chair and not the couch, but the chair is really comfortable. And sometimes maybe when I get up to go to the bathroom or maybe when I just get home and one of my children are, or I should be a good English teacher, right? One of my children is sitting in my chair that's the correct way to say that. Uh, I don't know if you want me to go into that too much, but one is the subject of that sentence and it's always singular. So one of my children is sitting in the chair and I might say, hey, thanks for keeping the seat warm. That means I want to sit there. You're sitting in my seat. It is quite rude though, be careful. I actually don't say that to my children. I just uh, usually ask them, hey, could you get up? Or they usually know when I'm home and getting ready to sit down, they will move over to the couch. You might also hear this saying in English, you feel warm. People will often say this to somebody else if they think they are sick. A lot of parents will do this, I I've done this. So if a child looks sick, you might feel their forehead with the back of your hand. The forehead is right here. And if you hear somebody say, ooh, you feel warm, that means they think they might be sick. So then they might have a fever or a temperature. So we use both of those sayings or words when the body is hot. So the parent will use a thermometer and get an accurate reading. Because let's face it, if you put your hand to somebody's forehead, you don't really know if they have a fever or temperature. You need a thermometer for that to get a little more accuracy, to be a little more correct. 
the snow is really coming down now. I hope it's not getting on my lens. Um, another way you'll hear warm in English, and speaking of kids, we have a kids game here in the United States, and I think it's called Hot or Cold, but the game goes like this. <coughs> it's hard to see and it's hard to talk, but hey, that's what makes it more interesting, right? The snow is really, really coming towards my face. So the game Hot and Cold goes like this. Someone will hide an object, maybe a cup, and they might put it in a drawer somewhere in a room. And the other people will have to find it. And as somebody is looking for that object, if they're really far away from that object, they will say, oh, colder, colder. But as they get closer to the object, they will say, oh, warmer, warmer, oh, you're getting hot. So as adults, we sometimes use this if you're trying to get someone to guess something. For instance, I have a hat on right now. It's probably covered with snow right now, just like most of my face. But I could ask you, hey, how much do you think this hat cost me? Maybe I got it on sale. Maybe I got a really good deal. And you might say $10. I might say, nope. And you might say nine dollars and then i could say Ooh, warmer that means you're getting closer to the answer and then maybe they say eight dollars and i would say bingo you got it right i paid eight dollars for this hat somebody might also warm to an idea this happens when you are trying to convince somebody or you're trying to get somebody to agree with you for example, when I first met my wife, I don't think she liked me very much, but I kept badgering her or I kept pestering her. Those are two other words we might use for bothering. So I kept bothering her, hey, let's go on a date. Let's go on a date. The, the first few times she said no, but she eventually warmed to the idea and then we started dating then we got married and she has been happy ever since. Every single day of her life, she's been happy because she married me. A couple other words that mean almost the same as warm in English are tepid and lukewarm, but we usually use these when it's a bad thing. So maybe you like your coffee hot, like most people, and you could say your coffee is warm, which, which might be okay, but if you say it's lukewarm, it's, it's probably a little too cold for your taste. Like if you got into a nice warm bath, well, that's a good thing. But if the water was lukewarm, eh, probably has cooled off a little bit too much and you're not as comfortable as you would be if the bath was warm or even hot. And the same goes for tepid. Yeah, it's warm, it's not cold, but it's not warm in a good way. Maybe someone gives you a tepid hug, that means they aren't that friendly, or a tepid handshake, or maybe after a performance, there's a, a tepid response from the audience, maybe a tepid round of applause. Not the greatest, not exactly what you want if you tried really hard on that stage. You don't want a tepid response or a lukewarm response. We can often use tepid and lukewarm as synonyms or interchangeably. Hope you've enjoyed this English lesson on the word warm. If you're looking for more deep dives, I did one right up there on balls. Like, it's cold as balls out here, or I'm having a ball out here. Check it out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.